Hello, my name is Ashiria, and today we're going to be learning about 3D printing and modeling. So in today's video, we're going to learn about what a 3D printer is, why a 3D printer needs a 3D design, and how we can use online tools to create a 3D design. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain what a 3D printer does, and also follow along with a tutorial to create the same model on your own. So let's get started. So here are some examples of 3D printers that exist in the world. As you can see, they come in many different shapes and sizes. Some of them can fit on a table, others are almost as big as the humans, but all of them have the same function. So the function of the 3D printer is to take a 3D model, as you can see here on the screen, which basically represents something that someone has imagined and created um, in the online workspace. So they have used these online tools and created this model. And then the 3D printer is able to create a physical object that represents this model and is the same thing in a real world application. And then you can use this model and the printing capabilities and create multiple copies of this item. So overall, the function of the 3D printer is to create physical items from a 3D design. So let's see how a 3D printer is actually able to do this. So here's a model of a 3D printer. On the right, you can see the filament. And what filament is, is basically a thin strip of plastic. And this feeds into the part of the 3D printer called the extruder. And the extruder has a very high temperature. So it's able to melt this plastic and slowly layer by layer, it can put this plastic in the desired shape onto the print bed, which is the base of the printer. And uh, layer by layer, it basically builds up and turns into the object that you had designed. As you can see, the extruder is very thin, so it allows for a lot of detail to go into the design, and it allows uh, from small to big designs, um, depending on what you have come up with. But throughout this process, you can see that the first thing you need is a 3D design. So here's some examples of that, and today we're going to be learning how we can actually create this design online. So let's get started. Here's an example of what I'll be teaching you to create in this next part of the video. Feel free to pause this video at any time so you can follow along with the tutorial. So the website that we will be using is called tinkercad.com. Once you log into Tinkercad, you should see a screen similar to this. And to start your design, you can click on create new design. So before we actually create our design, let's get familiar with what this workspace is all about and what are the different features that it has to offer. So here on the top left, you can see that we've been assigned some random name. And if you click on this, you can name it something uh, more relevant, but for now, we'll just leave it like that. Um, then when you go down, you have this cube, which basically allows you to look at your model from different angles. So if you click on it and drag it, you can change the angle. And you also have this home button, which will bring you back to the original position. Then you have these plus and minus buttons to zoom in and zoom out. On the right here, you have a lot of different shapes to choose from, which we'll be working with in a minute. And then over here, you have this edit grid button. This shows you the units and the size of this grid in the background that you'll be building on. So to make it easier to think about, let's put it in inches. And for a nice round number, we can choose eight. So now you can see that each of these uh, darker lines represents one inch, and we have eight going across and eight coming down. So as you saw in the final product, the object that we're going to create starts with a cube. So what you can do is select the cube and drag it onto the workspace. So you just click and drag. So once you do that, you can see that on the right here, this, we get this little pop-up, and if you click on this, it allows you to change the color to whatever you want. So we can do that. And then you also see that you get these little gray squares. And what this allows you to do is change the size or dimensions of this cube. So for the model that we're doing, let's make all of these dimensions four. So four inches, four inches, and then we can change our perspective a little bit. And for the height, also make it four inches. And then you can click on your cube and drag it to the center of the plane just to make it a bit easier. 
So there you have your cube. Um, again, you can, depending on your design, if you're not following exactly this video, you can change the different uh, dimensions. You can make it a rectangle, anything that you want. So now we have this cube, but as you saw, there needs to be a hole in the middle. So how do we do that? So what you can do is you can take this grayed out box. And what this means is this represents a hole. So um, this, when you merge it onto um, your box, you can see that there's a bit of an intersecting part and that's what we want to get cut out. So we're gonna align this new grayed out box or the hole to the solid box in order to cut out that part of the box. So um, I'll show you how that's done. So again, we have to change the dimension. So let's make this one two by two, but we want the height to still be four because we want it to go all the way through the box. So now you have this little bit smaller rectangular prism. And what you can do is you can go to the top view and you can align it to be kind of in the middle like so. So now you can see this, um, the hole is inside the solid box, but it's not actually a cutout. It's just kind of this grayed out area. So if we actually want to cut it out, what we do is we take our cursor here and we highlight the whole thing. And then we go to the top right and we see this button here, which means group. You can also use control G. And when you click that, the solid box gets merged completely with the hole and it actually cuts that part out of the solid box. So now you can see we have a cube, but it's hollow, it has a hole in it. And that was our goal. So hopefully through this video, you learned uh, some of the basics of how to drag a solid shape or a whole shape and use it in this workspace. You also have a lot of other options um, available to try out. And any of these shapes can be turned into a hole. All you have to do is drag it and then click hole. So you're not limited to only these two as a whole. So now you know how you can create almost anything you can imagine in this Tinkercad software. And hopefully you had fun learning this. Thank you.